Can Dana, we talk about an issue for one minute on Friday night? Can he win Michigan? I don't know. I'm not sure what Democrats he's going to win right now. The entire thesis of the campaign, Michigan. the entire thesis of the campaign was democracy is on the ballot. And when George Stephanopoulos asked him, well, if you lose and all these bad things come to pass, will you be OK with that? And he said, well, as long as we gave it our all. Let's discuss the state of the election today, because things continue to be terrible for Joe Biden. The polls, both nationally and in the swing states, continue to be an unmitigated disaster. On top of the fact that a new Democrat scandal of their own making just broke in the state of Pennsylvania, that may be even better news for Trump, because a local radio station there apparently accidentally revealed that Biden was feeding their host questions beforehand and this is a whole big thing so we'll tell you about that in a second but folks firstly if you enjoy the content be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new and i guess let's start today by discussing the national polls because obviously after the debate wall street journal has donald trump up 48 to 42 so that is a margin of six points new york times has trump up six points CBS has Trump up two. CNN has Trump up again by six. Now think about that in the landscape of our modern elections. And let's remember, I don't believe a Republican has won the popular vote since 2004. We have Trump up this big in the popular vote. I mean, that is obviously terrible news for Biden. And if Trump wins nationally by six, that is guaranteed that Biden loses the Electoral College in a complete blowout. But obviously, national polls, firstly, are not always the most accurate. And secondly, we obviously know that the national popular vote does not decide elections in America, although it's pretty ironic because have you noticed that this election year, the Democrats Democrats have suddenly stopped their talk about the Electoral College. You know, every single year they're saying we need to get rid of the Electoral College. It's not democratic. But notice how they haven't been doing that. And largely a reason they haven't been doing that is because right now, at least according to the data, and again, don't use this as a reason to get complacent, but Donald Trump may be the first Republican on track to win the popular vote since 2004. And I certainly think that is necessary because not only do we want to win this election, but we want to win essentially uncontested. We don't want to barely get over 270 so that way Democrats can try to deny the election results, which by the way, Way they will do. And we certainly don't want to hand them the popular vote talking point, right? So that's another reason I say don't get complacent in the election because I want to win on all fronts. I want to win all the swing states. I want to dominate the popular vote and just show the world that no, what happened in 2016 was not a fluke. Joe Biden and the establishment, we are obviously rejecting their leadership, so on and so forth. But okay, with that said, we also have this news out of the state of Pennsylvania, which I hope by this point, I don't have to tell you, is arguably the most important swing state in this entire election. It may be the state that decides the very election. Well, in the RCP average, and this is obviously an aggregate of several credible polls, uh, Donald Trump just took, if I'm not mistaken, the biggest lead of the entire 2024 election cycle. You can see right now, as of July 5th, 2024, Donald Trump leads an RCP by a spread of 4.5 points, which is obviously huge because for a lot of this year, yes, Trump has been leading in the state of Pennsylvania, but it's been pretty deadlocked. You can see here 1.6, 1.52. There's some points that Biden was leading very slightly by like 0.1, 0.5. This is the first time where we're seeing a dominant and convincing margin for Trump out of the RCP in the state of Pennsylvania. And one reason why I will point this out to be objective may be this Bloomberg poll right here. You see it had Trump leading in Pennsylvania by seven. Firstly, I don't know if that's very realistic, but the thing I would really point out about this poll is that it was just all over the place, right? Because there is just simply no scenario where Trump wins Pennsylvania by seven, but loses Michigan by five. It's just not realistic. Like either one happens or the other happens, but neither of these things can happen together. Michigan and Pennsylvania are just far too similar to see a spread of 12 
points like that. So, you know, Biden supporters can say I'm coping on that. No, you're just denying that Biden is up by five in Michigan. But I would point out this very poll still has Trump winning the Electoral College. I am just doing it as a matter of objectivity to say maybe that's not the most reliable. But even if we took that out of the aggregate, did the math here on a calculator, it would still have Trump leading an RCP by 3.6, which still, I believe, would be the largest margin in Pennsylvania of the entire year. But the news for Biden in Pennsylvania continues to get worse because you can't make this up. There is now a local scandal out of Philadelphia with a black radio station and black voters that might not matter nationally. I don't know if voters in Arizona or Nevada or Georgia are going to care, but really, this is a swing state you're fighting for your life in. And uh, take a look at what happened. So if you're not familiar, you might have heard this, but long story short, the other day, a black radio host at a black radio station in Philadelphia was interviewing Biden and Biden had a pretty terrible interview. You know, he was gaffing repeatedly. I think at one point he said he was the first female black president or something, or he appointed the black president. And he's talking about Kamala Harris, but he was totally all over the place in this interview. But apparently after the fact, this radio host revealed that the Biden White House sent her the questions beforehand to ask the president. So essentially here, they're rigging interviews. They're using pre-prepared questions. And that's already bad enough for Joe Biden. But on top of that, Biden still did not have a very good interview. And so that reminds me of the CNN debate, right, where all the rules were rigged in his favor and he still blows it. But on top of that, instead of just ignoring this, instead of trying to just let this information uh, go unnoticed, instead, this radio station decided to make a big public thing of it because apparently uh, Pennsylvania radio station WRT cuts ties. They have fired the host who interviewed Biden with the questions provided by the White House. So it says here in the press release, on July 3rd, the first post-debate interview with President Biden was arranged and negotiated independently by the radio station without knowledge, consultation, or collaboration with management. The interview featured predetermined questions provided by the White House, which violates our practice of remaining an independent media outlet outlet accountable to our listeners. As a result, Miss Lawful Sanders and WRD Radio have mutually agreed to part ways effective immediately. So again, instead of just sweeping this under the rug, the radio station fired this host. But then also, I think the thing that matters most here publicly acknowledged that yes, it is true. This host is not crazy. They were not making things up. No, it is indeed true that the Biden White House got caught giving the questions to the radio station. And so you have to imagine this is a pretty big story in Philadelphia and in the state of Pennsylvania, which again, might not make the biggest difference nationally, but come on, man, you can't have a local scandal in Philadelphia with black voters in the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, how much worse can the situation get? And then here is CNN also continually recently uh, ripping into Joe Biden. So we might as well play this and have a listen here. Let's talk about an issue for one minute on Friday night. Can he win Michigan? I don't know. I'm not sure what Democrats he's going to win right now. The entire thesis of the campaign, the entire thesis of the campaign was democracy's on the ballot. And when George Stephanopoulos asked him, well, if you lose and all these bad things come to pass, will you be okay with that? And he said, well, as long as we gave it our all. Now, if I was... A Democrat who's been hasn't blinked since January of 2017 or one of these never Trumpers who's worried about all this. And I heard Joe Biden admit that it's all just a facade, that it's all just a talking point. I would be freaked out right now to find out there's no animating issue for this campaign. It's just a grift. It's a that, grift. And, and that's a great point, by the way. If democracy is really on the ballot and Donald Trump is some type of evil th- who's going to suspend the U.S. Constitution, wouldn't you want to give a slightly better answer than if I lose? At least I tried my best, of course. But I think the bigger picture here, there is no confidence in Biden at the moment from the media, from the internal Democratic Party, from the polls, from black voters, from anywhere. And it's just hilarious to watch, especially considering as of the current moment, We still are getting no indication that Biden is going to drop out. And I will say this, the longer it goes, 
the less likely it becomes that they're going to make a move on this front. Because, you know, if they want to substitute Biden out, they can't just say the day before the DNC, oh, Joe Biden's dropping out. No, this is a process. He's going to have to step out very soon. So that way they can figure out the next nominee, whether they hand it to Harris or give it to a governor like Newsom or Obama or something. They have to do that soon. OK, so you can see here the signs are pointing to probably nothing is going to happen on that front. But at the same time, uh, Democrats, in a way, almost undermining themselves by just inspiring absolutely no confidence. So it just keeps piling on. That said, don't use it as an excuse to get complacent. OK, you may have seen in the French elections today, they can pull some dirty tricks. So don't let them do that again. Too big to rig. But beyond that front. We want to be winning so convincingly that we have a political mandate, because keep that in mind. If Trump wins 271 electoral votes and loses the popular vote, sure, we have the White House and arguably maybe that's all we could ask for. But I want more than that because I want a mandate. I want to shut down the talk, right? I want to have a win that is so convincing that they cannot deny us or deny our agenda or our political majority. So yes, at this point, the Trump campaign needs to be working extra hard. Why? Not just to win the election, but because we are chasing landslide sweeping victory status. So keep that in mind. But yeah, folks, there is the news out of the electoral world earlier today. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, Alpha Moves Only. God bless. Have a very great rest of your day. Peace.